All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm your host of the most KIR podcast. I want you to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Don't forget to hit that bell so the next time we have a video. Don't forget, follow me on Twitch. Check out the link in the description of this channel. Just go ahead and follow your boy, where we play Xbox Mondays, PlayStation 5 Wednesdays, and Friday is Switch Fridays. All about that Nintendo Switch, which we love to talk about on this channel. But without further ado, let's talk about it. Breaking news, and I mean breaking news. PlayStation has just bought Bungie. The next thing that we find out is breaking, a PlayStation game is coming to Nintendo. Wow, ain't nothing more, but let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go. All right, we're back. Let's get dive right off straight into it. MLB The Show is coming to the Nintendo Switch. I know it's late. I know it's been out on PlayStation, Xbox, and everywhere else for a while. But for us, Nintendo fans, to be having a Sony PlayStation game on Nintendo, plus Xbox games currently on Nintendo, man, we're moving in the right direction. All we need to do is upgrade that hardware, and then we can be like other systems and be on par, get that next-gen next gen experience. Hopefully, we'll get that DLSS technology eventually, Chip short is going on, so we don't expect that anytime soon. But MLB The Show is coming to the Switch, and I'm I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious how it's going to play on the Switch. Also, I just wanted to say, this has been a long time coming. Imagine if Sony could put other games, again, they'd probably be games that are two or three years older, on the Switch. That would just help everybody get along. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all just get along, play games no matter what it is, multi-platform, multi console it, it just be great for everybody to just be one big happy family it may happen it may not but this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship now let's get into the other big news as in 3.6 billion dollars or so worth playstation had just bought bungie i know what you're saying to yourself the people that made destiny the people that's got that free game destiny yes but you also know that Bungie also came up with Halo. They were the creators of it. So you know that Bungie definitely has some creative people over there. Again, they're not as innovative as they used to be, but what you can say is that this was a good buy because as somebody once told me, if you did it before and you made it yourself, you can do it again. So in my opinion, I have faith that something can come of this. Again, for $3.6 billion, you gotta see something. Now I'm not saying that Xbox ain't cool, but let's, let's get into this. Are you going to stop playing PlayStation just because Xbox bought Blizzard and Activision and Bethesda games? If you're a true warrior and soldier of PlayStation, you're not going to do that. You're going to still play it. PlayStation always been known for their exclusive games. We still got to admit that they still have some good games on the platform. Microsoft is not known for the games. Again, you got Halo, but now that they kind of got Bungie, that may or may not, you know, that may change a few things. Not saying that Bungie's still making Halo. What I'm simply saying is that Bungie created it, so Bungie should be able to create another beautiful game. Halo is a great game, but realistically, other than Halo, if you're not a super fan of Xbox, what else can you say that Xbox game that they make exclusive that you like, oh, I gotta go buy it? I'll wait. That's my point. Xbox needed games. They needed exclusive games. They went out and bought the studios that can give them that stuff. And I think that is great. I think Xbox is coming out swinging, throwing haymakers, baby. But in the same token, Sony ain't really said much nothing. Other than they hope it remains, remains multi-platform. Now, when you say multi-platform, that does not mean multi-console. So let's make sure that we distinct the two. So in my opinion, what I'm thinking is Sony got something up their sleeve. If I can make another big hit multiplayer game, like a version of Halo, but exclusive to PlayStation. It doesn't matter what Microsoft did because we are known for making exclusive games. Microsoft is not. That's why they're going out and buying this stuff. Now, it makes me wonder and question this. I know some of y'all gonna say I'm reaching a limb here, but what do you think in the comment section below if Apple said, hmm, I see what Microsoft trying to do. You trying to be a better company than us? What if they went out and said, you know what? This will never happen because FCC wouldn't allow it. We're going to go out and buy Sony. Apple buys Sony. Now Sony has buying power. Now Sony has money. They ain't going to the club and making the drizzle with change. They're going to the club and making it rain. That would change the whole game. 
Apple will finally say, you know what? You ain't better than us, not by far, but you were just trying to creep up and sneak up and try to do a little better. You're trying to step on the little man. Don't worry about it. We're going to step on you. Take over Sony camera division. If you're in the cameras, you know they strong. Imagine what they would do with a company like that. PlayStation would all of a sudden not only be white, but it had an Apple logo. It, it, boy, it would be amazing. But again, it would have never happened. But the only thing I'm simply saying is, let's be patient. Let's see what Sony does. I do like this acquisition. I do think that it was definitely needed because Microsoft trying to grab everything. Sony got to grab just not a bunch, one or two small particular ones that you know can make you more exclusive games. Because the reality of the situation is, if you're a PlayStation fan, you're going to be a PlayStation fan regardless. What was the first console you probably bought? Now, granted, I'm probably saying it's gonna be Atari or Sega, something like that, but you can't tell me you weren't in love with the PlayStation 1. You can't tell me you weren't in love with the PlayStation 2. Xbox cool and all, but you can't tell me that hands down that you know that Xbox was running the game. They wasn't. PlayStation always stepping on their throat. But it's all good. It's like the new girl at school. Yeah, other new man, other new person. We have to be get everybody included. The grass always looked green on the other side. Old Faithful has always been there. You got to be careful. Again, I don't say abandon ship. What I'm saying is we're going to tighten up. We're going to hunker down. Xbox throwing their jabs. PlayStation fans, you got to stand up and take it. It's all good. Let's hit it with the rope dub. Let's see what they do. But for our Nintendo Switch fans, I'm excited. We get Sony games and Xbox games. That means things are changing. And I am happy for it, and I'm excited, and I hope you are too. But you could have been to West Side Hang on me. I want to say I appreciate that. Thank you. Sir Metal is in the back. Hey, we are now going to be PC gaming. That's right. I bought a PC, and we're going to be playing some PC games. So get with your boys. So if you're in the PCs, get at me, dog. You know my handle. Check me out on Twitch. You know. Get with me on Twitter, Whittle. I better yet, get me with on Do It For The Gram. Email me, podcast at yahoo.com. Let me know what PC games you like, because I got one or two that we're going to play, and I want y'all to check it out with me. Keyboard and mouse. What? Not controller, but keyboard and mouse. Mm. Got him! Ha <laughs> ha! Without further ado, I appreciate it, and thank you. Don't forget, switch it on.